going to do everyone at once today, so if all of you would like to make your way onto the stage and take a seat.
Yeah, just student support services, and um, I'm running also with Your Voice, the ticket, so um, we, uh, my, my policy is it's um, very in line with them and I have confidence in them, that's why I'm running with a ticket and also on top of that I'm wanting to sort of establish a exchange committee next year if that's possible. I'll be looking to work with um, the international office to do that, um, to look for the avenues to do that because I'm personally unsure about that yet. But um, also I will be running um, all the events that's been going on this year um, that Rachel, the current ISO, have been doing. I think she's did a really good job. And so, yeah, I want to maintain and preserve those events because they're great exposure for international students. So. Hey, I'm James and I'd love to be a college's officer for 2017. Uh, I believe I can bring a lot of enthusiasm, commitment uh, to this role and it's something I'm actually quite passionate about. Uh, I'm coming out of college next year, 2017, so I know what works what doesn't work and what's working but needs a little bit of improvement. Uh, I want to be impartial to all the colleges so I can you know, offer a very neutral voice to represent all OUSA colleges equally. And yeah, I'll keep it brief, but vote for James, thank you. Uh, hey guys, I'm Caitlin Barlow, I'm going for Recreation Officer. Um, I'm a third year economics and finance student. Um, I'm also the current sports rep for Compsa, head of logistics for Relay for Life, and being involved in the Kent School Group, which is the Kent Society run, or the student run Kent Society Group. Um, yeah, well, I'm the only one going for rep, so you should vote for me. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Sina. I'm also a third year student studying economics and finance. So that's, um, yeah, that's cool. Um, I'm vice president of the Samoan Students Association. Uh, I've had two years of learning experience. Um, I stayed at Alana in my first year, and next year I'll be a submaster or RA at um, Knox College. I believe I have experience. Um, I love Otago. I love OUSA and I really want to contribute and another strong um, factor that contributed to me um, running for OUSA executive is that um, in the past year, past years I haven't um, felt that it reflects the student body. I feel like it could be more diverse and we could have more women as well. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Kia ora koutou, and good afternoon to you all. My name is Eden Yatsi, I'm a third year student. Um, I am studying, uh, that's really bad, I don't know what I'm studying, sorry, I'm studying law and politics, um, and I'm running for campaigns officer. Um, the reason I'm running is, well, it was actually very last minute, but um, I, I'm really passionate about politics, and I think that as, um, in the position of campaigns officer, I think it's really cool to um, encourage our students to get really um, involved in politics, no matter what you're studying. Politics is always going to affect you, and it's always going to be in everything that you do. So if we train up our students now and really push them to be engaged with this, then I think... Um, we will create great leaders for the future and they will be able to contribute to society in a way that they're way more aware of um, what's going on, um, how the government's uh, decisions will affect them and how they can contribute to society in a way that they will actually have a voice in the government as well. Um, I know I'm the only person running the campaign, so I mean, please vote for me. Do not have no confidence. I just wanted to really bring the best of me to you guys so that you actually have confidence and know that I will do um, everything to the best of my ability to make sure that your voice is heard um, at OUSA. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, just keep the mic down there, and then we'll come back the other way for this one. I'm going to basically ask two questions in one and give each candidate 30 seconds on this question. So yesterday we had a discussion at the start of the presidential forum about the purpose of OUSA, and throughout the two discussions there's been some distinct themes. Um, some people think OUSA should be a strong protesting voice when uh, the university is doing things which are arguably against student interests. Other had a more, others had a more middle ground where sometimes it was appropriate to work with the uni, um, other times it was appropriate to stand up. Um, and then in the first forum we had a candidate who thought that OUSA 
um, should just concentrate on the provision of services. Um, actually, no, I won't ask another question as well because that's really long-winded. Uh, so what I'd just like each candidate to do is explain sort of with reference to that spectrum where they see themselves and what they see as the key role of OUSA. Um, uh, thinking about it uh, in terms of like what I would be able to do as a campaigns officer in, in that kind of position, I think uh, working together with like the, the higher power, if you may, um, and working together as students um, in conjunction with what they actually have a vision for. Sorry, is that answering your question? Um, yeah, so like working together with them, I think is the best way to go about it because I mean, I, I heard what a lot of the candidates said yesterday and the day before and you know, if you just strongly oppose things, then you're not really gonna be heard unless, um, as well as if you work together with them. Um, so it's kind of just compromising and like making sure that we can all work together to make sure that the student voice is actually out there in a way that goes together with the whole like vision that Otago has. Does that make sense? Um, I believe that OUSA primarily should serve the needs of students and so if students as a whole are concerned about an issue and want their, their exec to serve as that sort of like body that protests or does that kind of thing, then we should do that. Or if um, they want something else, then we should uh, just cater to what students want, cater to what they need or um, prefer. Does that make sense? Just, yeah. So, but primarily I think OUSA should just serve students. Thank you. Um, I'm pretty much in the middle ground. I say that it's really important that OUSA knows what students want, but I also feel like there's some things that you obviously can't protest against, so I would just, yeah, be in the middle ground. Uh, yeah, I agree with the guys before me. It's all about maintaining a balance. I mean, at the end of the day, OUSA is for students' voice, and that should be our priority, but if we were to, you know, compare every single thing that the Otago University does, we won't have a working relationship. So it's about sort of finding the balance between working with Otago University and also being the student's voice. Um, I think middle ground as well because um, as much as I want to support every international student um, when it comes to sort of social problems outside university, there's some things that we can't control. Um, so yeah, definitely middle ground when it comes to that. Also um, being a body of, um, a representative body for international students, I believe that I need to, it's my responsibility to make sure that they're aware of the statuses that's available in university. Um, so, in that way, um, I think that OESA serves as student, um, yeah. I could be considered middle ground, but while I think it's a good idea that OUSA works with the university, I also think it's OUSA's job to ensure that the university is providing everything it possibly can to the students, and that when it decides to make a change, that it is providing the reasoning for, the five, um, for those changes to the student body. Um, so I'm going to change this up a little bit because my main concern is with the postgraduate students. So, over the past few days I've noticed that every single candidate has sat on the stage and they've advocated for one cause or another. If you are genuinely concerned with these causes, you need your postgraduate community. We have a wealth of knowledge within this campus. We have neuroscientists. If, for example, I'm a, I'm a big advocate for mental health awareness and I really want to break down that stigma that comes with mental health. But I'm an archaeologist, so I don't know everything about mental health. So we're going to need our neuroscience students, our philosophy students, our PE students, our bloody, all of our students. We need them all. I think what we need to realise is that OUSA needs its postgraduate students just as much as the postgraduate students need OUSA. Oh, thank you. Now what I want to do is you've all kind of uh, conveniently said middle ground. Uh, is find out what uh, presidential candidate uh, you are either officially affiliated with or who you would vote for if the election uh, was held today. Um, you can have sort of 10 to 15 seconds to justify it, uh, but I just want a pretty pretty snappy answer. So we'll start here, go down the line. Yeah, I'm not associated with any of the presidential candidates and I was genuinely 
genuinely very impressed yesterday with what I saw from all three of them. And then we all three have amazing qualities. Um, Hashman is so open-minded, he's challenging. Lark is so passionate. Hugh is just so into it. He's got so much experience in the river. I have confidence in all three of them. It's up to you guys who you vote for. I was told my shirt colour today showed my support, which was completely random pick from the closet. Um, after yesterday's forum, I would have to give, and if I was voting today, I'd have to give my support to Lark. Um, I just think that she has the strength needed, as, um, while the other two were definitely passionate about what you were saying, the presidential, um, their campaigns and their beliefs. I believe they didn't have enough um, uh, not sure the word to use, sorry. Force, forcefulness in them to, to push through what OUSA, OUSA can do. Um, I am officially a player to your voice, so I will be supporting um, Lark, obviously, um, because I think she's a very confident individual, and I feel like she thinks really fast, and I feel like she has good responses to problems, and um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm also affiliated with Lark, but aside from that, I feel like she's the passionate and sort of genuine voice beneath what you say. She's also approachable, which is a really important thing for our president, and I'd love to see her on the ground next year. Yeah. Um, I'm affiliated with none of the above, but I would put my vote with Hugh. Just, I think they're all pretty approachable and would do a great job. I just think Hugh would be good too. Um, I'm with Laura, I believe every candidate was really well spoken yesterday um, and I'm tossing up between Hugh and Hash. Um, I like Lark, um, <laughs> but uh, I feel like Hash's approach to everything was really quite principled and really, I don't know, there was just a lot of like mana in, in his answers and Hugh's um, also had a lot of experience with OUSA or with Critic, but um, yeah, so maybe one of those two. Yeah, I'm with Sina and Laura. That was a really hard one yesterday. Um, definitely amazing candidates, and I think everyone definitely brought their own strength. Um, yes. Can the 15 seconds be up now? No. <laughs> the other way, uh, just before we sort of go on to more generalised issues, I do want to make sure you have an opportunity to outline what the key policies or priorities for your specific portfolios are. So I will give um, each candidate uh, 30 seconds to do that. If I do ring the bell, you don't need to abruptly stop, but do just wind up what you're saying. Cool. I think just one of them is really like pushing for um, more political engagement. I think next year is a really important year for the general election, so I'd really like to um, push that as one of them, just getting everyone involved, especially um, with the a lot of the colleges that come down. I think it would be great to actually go out there and be able to just um, get them more aware. Um, other than that, I think the uh, campaigns officer from this year did an awesome um, initiative with the whole OUSA 24 hour study nights and I think just continuing on from that um, and yep yeah, so thank you. Um, my, my three policies are um, to firstly be involved with RA training. I believe that RAs have such an important role in all colleges and this way I'd be able to get involved and establish good relationships. Um, for the year. Secondly, I would like to run OUSA campaigns in the colleges, um, such as Thursday in, Thursdays in Black, which is already currently being done. Um, and lastly, I would like to run more flooding advice forums or something like that, so we prepare our freshers or our residents for flooding life. Um, I've had experience in a cold flat and yeah, I want our residents to be prepared. Thank you. Um, my policies are pretty much just to ensure that new clubs and stocks get their uh, external and, and internal funding and that all the information is available to them. Um, I know what it's like since being part of COMPSA and Relate for Life, how sort of hard or like it is to get all the information and I feel like uh, I have the experience from doing that so I know what is needed to be put in place. 
Uh, one of my main policies we're really working towards like a more inclusive OSA environment. We want the prison to be there in a week talking to colleges. We want to be, you know, posters in common rooms telling our students what OSA actually offers them and stuff like that. It's all about really getting OSA in there. And they've been great this year. We want them to know our executive, know them personally, and really develop those relationships. Uh, this year also I think there was uh, a mental, uh, sort of like a sexual awareness campaign trial in the pupils by Harlan Haynes. I like to take things like that, Thursdays in Black and the Kid Covenants, and push them harder next year and get them across all our holes. Yeah. Um, I want to make sure that international students experience a healthy and inclusive um, education um, experience in Otago. Um, I believe I understand myself after being eight years of how difficult it is to sort of transition. Um, from a foreign culture to New Zealand's culture. Um, I think that will be my main um, policy next year and I'll do that through increasing access accessibility um, in OESA for international students and again raising awareness of the insurance policy that they have. Um, they really, that comes with their visa, so yeah. I want to get more interaction between postgraduates from different departments and also get a more visible presence for postgraduates on campus. And with next year being election year, I also want the government to help make sure the government takes notice that even though postgraduates are a smaller part of the university student body, they are also an important part of New Zealand's future and campaign for more resources for postgraduate students. Cool. So I just want that I really want the postgraduate community to be inclusive. I can't stress that enough. I, as I said earlier in my three minutes feel. I, Mariana's been doing this great work, which has been setting up these communication networks between these different postgraduate societies. I really want to continue that. Her work has been so selfless because she's not going to be able to see these kinds of forums or meetings that we're all going to be able to have together, but she's being able to set that up for either Adam or I. I want to be the person that carries that on because if we've got this network of postgraduate, uh, postgraduate students, Imagine the things we can do. We can have forums, we can go for meetings, we can go for walks. And if we have a postgraduate community that's inclusive, we're going to be postgraduates that are happy, balanced, and productive. Cool. Awesome, guys. Um, so I want to get all of your views on uh, fees, university fees. So uh, yesterday or the day before, University Council voted to increase the fees by 2%. Um, so I just want to know whether you support or oppose that, um, and I might uh, ask some further questions depending on your answers. Um, so with fees, again, my main concern is with postgraduate students. For postgraduates, it's so expensive to study here if you do not have a scholarship. It is so hard, and I find it so challenging that we have these incredible minds that aren't able to do the research that they were destined to do because they can't afford it or they don't have access to that, to that funding. And that's something that I just want, that, that is something that I do want to challenge. It's something that I want to get on top of. I'm not 100% supportive of fee increases, but I'm still almost on the fence. It's something that I want to learn. I want to learn so much about. I want to talk to my postgraduate students. I want to know what they think about it. And then I want to get onto it and I want to do something. Keep, keep, keep the mic. Um, because if you're talking about scholarships, last year the university recently increase the number they gave out, particularly at undergrad level. But if you want scholarships uh, for postgrad, then surely you know you need to increase the fees because the university's got to have that money to subsidise postgrad students. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, you can share it with me. I think I think there's something that I've just learned sat here on the spot. So I imagine if next year if I'm in this postgraduate role, I'm going to keep learning just like that. Because all the candidates say they won't oppose the fee increases because they want votes and they want to look popular. But isn't it the role of the, the postgrad rep to really safeguard the quality of education Ooh, at the university? Yes. Um, it is. The, it's, I think it's the role of every single OUSA member to safeguard, executive member to safeguard the quality of education at this university. Um, so as a postgraduate student, if uh, an increase in fees means that we're going to get better, more scholarships out there for students, and I guess I am supportive of this, but I think perhaps there's some route that we can go down where we can find a compromise. And let's work on that next year. Uh, yeah, so just first of all, your view on the fee increase, support or oppose? I support the fee increase. I believe that 
uh, is needed for Otago University to continue to compete on an international level. And considering that this will be mostly going to academic and support staff, this is especially relevant to postgraduate students who rely on those services even more than undergraduate students. Oh, and I just you know, ask both the postgrad um, candidates this question. So the government, um, a few years ago now, sort of capped the number of years for which they would provide um, support, like the 70 FTS caps, as it's known as. Um, what's your view on that policy? Um, I actually don't agree with it being applied to postgraduate students. I can agree to it being applied to undergraduate studies. Um, and the fact that and it should, you should fairly be able to complete an undergraduate degree within that, within that amount that you've got. But when it comes to a postgraduate study, you're devoting a big amount of your life to putting, um, gaining experience to put a, a huge amount into the New Zealand as a whole, more, even more so than undergraduate, so it should not be capped for postgraduates. Do you think there should be a maximum though? Like, should, be a, should you be able to study for 30 years? That's taking things a bit excessive. So, so what, what kind of ballpark figure would you suggest as the, the limit? I would say probably about 10 years at the limit. Cool, cool. And Lucy, what's your view on the 7 FTS cap? What, what kind of figure do you think it should be at? So I will always question the integrity of people who value economic return over human rights. Um, I think it's a human right to be able to study as a postgraduate student if that's what you want to do. I do not support the seven F cap. I think it's limiting and non-inclusive and it's not okay. So perhaps my cap, let's say around the 10 year mark, at least we've got our medical students who have already done their science undergrad degrees going through and still being able to complete their medical degree. Oh, thanks guys. Um, so we're now moved to the international candidate. Um, you guys, your constituency pays much higher fees. We do. Um, so what, what's your view on the general fee increases but also for international students? Um, generally, I would oppose it based on the same reasoning as being inclusive. Um, they shouldn't be, they shouldn't need to have a um, fee increase for people to actually, I don't know, I'm personally in support of free education, ultimately, but um, I do not support the fee increase for international students either. Um, that's an increase of 4% next year and we don't know the correlation between the um, enrollment and um, the fee increase. increase. Um, this is just not enough statistics for us to do um, research on that. Um, the current um, ISO have already done a lot of research on that. Um, yeah, and um, I feel like there needs to be more transparency between um, the university and international students. Well, the reason they would charge more is because they can only raise domestic fees domestic students by 2%, so they hit the internationals with the, with the bigger increase. So do you think maybe uh, domestic students should carry the load of the increase a bit more? Um, I think that's a question put to Parliament, uh, because I think that's a, something that's um, to do with central government, um, but I do not think that international students should compensate for that um, gap. Cool, thank you. Um, I understand, I mean, obviously no one likes the idea of fee increases, it's, it's not a positive thing, but I think it's, you have to look at it as what are we actually getting from it. Uh, fee increases, are, we don't like it, but if we're getting some good things from it, if we're getting like scholarships for postgraduate students, it's a positive. Uh, so it's a matter of tying up between the two, so I'll say I'm for it as long as the things we're getting from it are, you know, acceptable. Especially considering college students, they're paying a lot up to this college's fees. We want to make sure, you know, they're, they're not paying too much, but, yeah. I agree, no one likes to be increased, but I also think that there's no harm in it. I have had some great lecturers over my time here, and I think they definitely deserve a bit of an increase in pay, sometimes. Um, I need this support or oppose the increases. I don't feel I know enough about the reasons why they're increasing fees, so. Um, but an important thing that was raised on the Tuesday's forum was that um, everyday living expenses, lowering those is more, oh, keeping those lower is more important than 
your uni fees, you're going to pay off your uni fees anyway if you're a student or if you're a domestic student. Um, and so I feel like getting everyday living costs lower is more important um, for college residents. They're already paying a lot, so um, they'll be concerned with that in, their, in the following year after they leave their college. Uh, yeah, I, I quite agree with what you said. I think um, it's mainly the weekly cost that is a big factor. I think a 2% increase, if it can be justified in a way that's definitely beneficial to the students, then I would you know, agree with it and not necessarily oppose it, but I'd, I'd still be on the fence a bit. Okay, cool. And I just want to ask one question of the two college, colleges candidates. Um, going to a college costs a lot of money for first year students and in some cases second year students. I just want to know whether you think that for the amount students pay they get a good value and a good return on that expenditure. I think that being in a college is a huge part of the Otago Uni experience. Um, it is a lot of money but with that you get the experience of college life. You get to go to sports day or you get to be involved with all the sports and you know that kind of experience you truly like initiate yourself and scarf your life or whatever you know like I do think it's expensive but um, it's really important it's an important part of it. Oh, oh thank you. Yeah, I mean, I agree it's expensive. I think it's a matter of maybe looking into the specifics of where the money's going. Uh, Baden, the current college officer, I believe he looked into the, I think it was $800 uh, sort of activities fee that goes into your college, sort of, uh, less money like that, and looking into that and seeing where that money's going. Uh, so, stuff like that, I feel like we need to look and see where our money is going, because it is a lot of money at the end of the day. As much as it's brilliant and, you know, I'd say a massive part of the Otago U sort of experience, it needs to be looked into, but yeah. Oh, cool, thanks guys. Um, some of you have, have alluded to it, um, so if you've already answered, um, you can just be really brief and others can be brief as well. So we had the question in the previous forums about day-to-day -day living costs and the student allowance uh, and course-related fees. Um, do you think that if you had a choice between choosing whether to get more weekly income or whether you could say eliminate your fees entirely, which one would you choose? Um, yeah, yeah, you start there. Okay, uh, so between getting, you say, increased living fees, like on a daily week basis, or getting rid of our loan entirely, you say? Yeah. I mean, if it's a matter of getting rid of our loan entirely, I think we'd obviously go for getting rid of our loan entirely, but, um, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't seem, it seems like a no-brainer, really. So, so if, if you got rid of your, your course papers entirely, you'd still need to pay the living costs on a, on a weekly basis. Okay. It's nice. So you're removing the cost of paying for like the courses themselves. Yeah. But yeah. Like, I mean, from what I understand, the cost of paying for the course themselves is would be overall more yeah. than the actual living cost. So it's a matter of saying we are would be getting more money by like removing the cost of the papers themselves. Okay. Cool. Cool. We don't get any income. Um, we only pay fees. Um, so for me, obviously, if you cut um, the cost paper fees, then that would be great. Like, then we don't need to pay for anything. So that's quite important, and I don't actually know the answer to this question, but the Labour Party proposal for three years free tertiary education, does that apply to international students? Do you know? Um, I need to do more research on that. I don't think I can answer you for that. Does anyone in the audience know the answer to that? Does the, the three years proposal by Labour apply to international students? Yeah. Um, I'm for reduced living costs over reduced study costs. I personally struggle with my living costs and have to work 20 hours on top of my postgraduate studies, which means my postgraduate studies suffer incredibly because of that. So if I had to make the choice, it would definitely be an increase of government spending on living costs rather than a decrease in tertiary costs. Um, yes, I'm also on this boat. I think we need to increase living costs. I don't know how Adam feels about this, but I'm at a point, I'm at an age where lots of my friends are, have been working full time, they're all buying houses, they're all going traveling. I'm 24 and I'm still living like I did as a first year student. Um, but then my master's degree tells me that I can't work for more than 10 hours a week. So I can only have this amount of money. I'm entitled to this amount of money. 
but I can't work very much. What's that about? So I'm not really getting much money each week. So yeah, I'm a big supporter. If we have to cut down these prices of our, of our papers and call papers to increase weekly allowances, then yeah, I want to make that better. We'll send the mic uh, back down to that end. I think we've had some pretty clear answers, but uh, feel free to restate your position if you wish. Uh, yeah, I agree with um, what's been said before. I think it's the day-to-day -day living costs that are more important. Um, I don't think... I know what the Labour Party proposed, and I think it's just... I went to a speech, actually, that they did, and I just don't think it's actually feasible out of what kind of money is being allocated into education or tertiary education at the moment, so um, definitely for like the weekly costs. Um, yeah, so I prefer lower living costs as opposed to free fees, but I do like the labour policy of three years free tertiary education. Um, yeah. I'm also down for having lower living costs. Um, I share a room this year, so I know what it's like to have to cut some costs and cut some, I guess, priorities to be able to afford to live, so, yeah. Oh, and you answered first? Yep. Yeah, cool. Um, so maybe if we just send the mic down to that end. Um, we'll just do some quick fire questions, so just hold the mic until I've kind of uh, finished. Uh, do you use support uh, the university installing CCTV cameras uh, for the purposes of security and keeping people safe? I do to a certain extent, um, maybe at certain times of the weekend when it could be dangerous and we, because I think the protection of students and their flats and stuff are really important. Um, and there's been a bit of discussion about the animal testing lab the university's built. Are you for or against that proposal? Uh, I'm for it because of the benefits that I've heard that it can have. Uh, the cost, that would probably be a bit of a negative for me, but yeah, mainly for it. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, no, um, yeah, so CCTV cameras, or against? Would they face the flat? Um, I, 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 I think to be effective, like, the more they can see, the better they are, so let's assume that they can see into private, not literally inside, <laughs> but maybe the front lawn of private property. So you mean for, like, Hyde Street, or just all the time? Yeah. Um, I have to see what the students say as a whole. I don't want to... Apparently there was a poll and it was a 50-50 split. So what, what do you think? What way would you vote? Um, I would oppose it. Oh, and are uh, the animal testing lab? Oh, sorry. Um, what animals do it? Uh, will they be tested? Do you know? I, I don't actually know. I think so. my answer would depend on that. Okay. Um, I would have to say I'm for CCTV. Because last year I lived in Castle Street and my neighbour's flat got ruined by some people that just walked in and smashed a very large TV and I feel sorry for them. So I'd say that it'd probably be helpful for that kind of thing. Um, and I'm for animal testing. Um, I'll probably be for the CCTV cameras. As much as it annoys people, it's pushing our, like, our privacy, which is an issue. If people think their cars smashed, their possessions, possessions stolen, I, that's just, at the end of the day, that's not okay. I feel like we need these CCTV cameras to keep an eye on people and look after us. Uh, I'd also say I'm probably for the animal testing. There's some brilliant sort of uh, positives that we can get from it and the research. Oh, thank you. Um, personal view is probably against um, the CCTV um, because <sighs> infringement of privacy. It's just too much control on the university and it's just not necessary um, because I feel like the police can do that. The university doesn't need to do that. Um, that's, yeah, out of the boundaries. And for animal testing, I feel I'm for it because it's either humans or animals, so, yeah. Um, I'm for the CTV, CCTV cameras. Um, to use a reference no one will probably get, I don't believe the University of Otago is interested in becoming the Ministry of Truth. Um, uh, I've heard lots of my, um, people I know complain about incidents that have happened to their flats, near their flats, and I believe CCTV could definitely be used to help it, um, prevent that. 
Um, as for the animal testing lab, I'm supportive of it. Um, Otaki University has a very good ethics um, board, and I don't believe that it, um, it will be used for anything that other than that is, it is necessary for. I'm a CCTV camera, and I'm for the animal testing lab. Oh, thanks guys, we'll just hold the mic there. I um, want to have a more broader discussion about student um, behaviour, because that's always a hot topic. Um, and so we've been having discussions around how students should be punished, whether we should use a punitive approach, whether they should be punished by both the university and the law, or just one or the other. Um, so I'm just interested in your general views on that, and then I might ask some follow-up questions depending on what position you're running for. So if you want to start, closely. Okay so, okay, so basically I want to ask the question is, at the moment, is the university too harsh on students who do wrong, or should they be harsher? That, that kind of thing. Um, it's a tricky one for me because I have a little bit of a problem with band-aid solutions to problems. I think if someone's doing something wrong, why are they doing something wrong? Isn't it a, la a larger social issue? Isn't there something there that they've been taught from a young age to do that probably isn't as socially acceptable as they should be doing? So why don't we just get to the root of that problem and start fixing it from there on up? When it comes to individuals, I think they deserve the punishment that they're given, but at the same time, should we also be rehabilitating these people and teaching them, teaching them why what you did was wrong? what you did was not acceptable for these reasons. Oh, cool. So you are for punishment with rehabilitation. That's cool. I'm just interested in your point about whether it's something that's been socialised or they haven't learnt in the past. But isn't the thing that, like, you know, Otago's full of lots of kids who have, you know, from nice middle-class backgrounds, um, and they wouldn't behave like that in their own city and street, but when they're in Otago, they're different. Well... It's hard because you can't control the way people are going to act, but what we can do is we can start thinking about the future. So with this huge body of academics that can start teaching other people and start talking about it, start having these conversations that, no, it's not okay to act like this. And then in a few years, these kinds of problems, they might even start to be stamped out. So that's what I think. Well, thank you. Um, in terms of this, I think that perhaps if a student breaks a law, then the punishment should come from the legal side of things, but they are responsible to the university, so they should, if they, then the actions will reflect on every student member at the university, so they should be answerable to the university in some form. Okay, yeah, so just to give a bit of context around that law versus university thing, people who throw bottles or burn couches are breaking the law, but the police don't have the capacity to turn up every time that happens, whereas Campus Watch might so in those situations where someone throws a bot, glass bottle or burns a couch, um, do you think it's correct that the university can punish them and then they get punished by the law? Um, no, I think they should only be punished by the law for that, as it's not happening um, on it, on the university, but um, there should be also be some kind of, um, not so much a punishment, but some kind of form when they do have to still give some kind of respect to the university for their breach of, um, on, on how their actions are reflecting. Cool, okay, thank you. Um, I don't think that they should be prosecuted twice, um, that's for sure, but um, if, it's, if the university were to take any stance on um, judging prosecuting someone of an offence, I feel like they shouldn't be arbitrary in any way, there should be some regulations around that, and, um, yeah, yeah. Cool, oh, cool, thank you. Um, I think, I think it's important to treat us as adults, sometimes we can sort of get condescended, especially college students, they're sort of entering the adult world, it's their first time leaving home, I think it's a matter of treating us as adults, uh, I feel like, it shouldn't be both. The law and the university shouldn't both be punished. I think if the university can step in and deal with the, the, you know, the person who's done something wrong, I think that's brilliant. 
Uh, specifically to colleges, you might be asking. I think it's important that in colleges we set a standard, and I think it's from there, you know, the second years and third years who are coming from that, that's where we can have a, like a better standard of towards doing things like this. So I think colleges could also step in and look after their, their students. There are often complaints that people in colleges get fined by RA or master. Um, what's your view on how punishment or rehabilitation should best work for students in colleges? I mean, I, I think everyone gets annoyed with the fines. It's annoying, but I feel like it's necessary to sort of maintain the, the sort of environment of a college. Some people are there to study, some people are there to you know, work really hard as a night and night for a test and more uh, the next morning. And they don't want people sort of making a noise. I think it's necessary to have the RAs like, ensuring things are, are, are going well. But, um, so fines are okay in some Yeah, I think fines are okay. I think there's a line. Sometimes some RAs could maybe push a little bit more. So it's a matter of ensuring that the RAs know, specific, you know exactly what the, what the standard is for fines and like that, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, I think that it should be either the law, or the police, whatever, um, or a target uni to punish them. I think it's, it's case by case, I guess. I mean, there's a special model, I guess it's illegal, but like, the university's gonna do it, um, sort it out better than the police would, because it's an easier thing, you know? There's no point putting that kind of thing on the police. Oh, so uh, you're going to be in Knox next year, um, so are you going to, as an RA, take a harsh line or you're more for rehabilitation? Um, I think it, I'm in for an um, interesting job next year, you know, you're right, it'll be a bit of work, um, but I'll take a balanced approach. Um, with respect to the main question, I think each individual, when you sign the student code of conduct, you know what things you can and can't do. Um, when you enter a college, you know what kind of culture they have, you know the rules, you know which, if the RAs can find you or not, uh, and so on and so forth. So I think, um, yeah, students should know what they're getting themselves into. So, so fines are okay in some circumstances? Yes, I believe they're a part of college life. Well, it depends on each college. Each each hostel, each hall is different. Cool, oh, cool, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm going to agree with that balance approach. I think it also depends on what kind of um, crime or whatever that they commit. Uh, I do think it's important to nurture and care for our students, but I do think that sometimes you do have to face consequences so that you can learn from your mistakes. Um, and in regards to whether both should um, both the university and the law should deal with it. I heard a comment yesterday from one of the presidential candidates that said, um, you know, the, a lot of the times the university brings in like consequences such as like community service, and I think that is just a good to, to society that you should actually pay if you do commit such crimes, and um, and whatever you deal with with the law, that's just a consequence. Um, but I do believe that as a student, we should still take the time to um, put in measure, measures of rehabilitation as well. Cool, thanks guys. Um, so I now move into more talking about like how you will act generally as an exec member. So exec will often have um, disagreements. Um, so I want to know, no more than 15 seconds from each candidate, how, how, how you personally go about resolving disagreements. Um, I think we'd have to just probably be reasonable and just like um, lay all the points out and just see which whichever really speaks for the student body as a whole. Like that's what we, that's the main goal. And if we all have that main goal in mind, I think that should resolve like many issues. Stu student body can have quite diverse views though. So I it's like like CCTV, it's 50-50. What, what do you think exec should do in that instance? Well, that's a tricky one. Um, I think. I don't think I really have an answer for that. I think. Do you think exec should solve those issues by way of vote at a public meeting, or should they sort them out behind closed doors beforehand? Or um, I think it's important to have an open meeting. I mean, you are the voice for the whole student body, so I think it's important that everyone really does have an input and gets to hear everything, so everything's transparent. Cool. Oh, thank you. Um, I think Edith's made a good. Suggestion just laying out the pros and cons of things, and I do think a vote would be a good idea. Um, if they're if it's a contentious matter such as CCTV, I think it would be good to have public meetings. Whereas I think it should just perhaps um, 
be at the reserve's discretion whether we do make the vote public or not. Yeah. Oh, um, so I just want to ask another question of you two because I think you made a really good point at the start of um, whether OUSA can be more diverse and how it represents students. So obviously, you know, having you guys on there would be a good start for that. Um, but do you have any policies uh, that you would implement on OUSA to make it uh, more appealing to a wider range of students? Um, as of yet, I don't think we have policies, but I think just merely us being on exec would help that. Um, I think being as a ticket, there are sort of people together who have the same, same sort of um, opinions. Um, I don't know about their backgrounds as such, but just ideological, uh, ideologically similar. Um, but I think merely having us on board would bring in the civic community, perhaps, and other minorities. Um, I think as a student looking at, oh, who's on my exec? Can I not see just Pākehā faces? is not that appealing. Um, but that's a really good question and that's something that I'd be really interested um, and motivated to look at and to see how we can engage the whole student body. Because, and you maybe want to pass, pass the mic, OUSA used to have a um, specific um, Pacific Islander rep, I believe, um, and obviously when exec got downsized from 20 to 11, those particular constituencies uh, were lost and there probably hasn't been that much Pacific Island representation since um, Toa, uh, who was the international rep last year, was of Pacific Island descent. Um, but do you think that OUSA needs to make more of an effort to engage that community? Um, so that exact topic was discussed at a forum last Wednesday. Um, and it was me, <laughs> I was the one who raised the point because they discussed having, why don't we have a Pacific Island rep on the OUSA? But I said, why don't we just nominate either, any of us to go for a general role? Um, we'd get it on based on merit, based on the votes, and that would be a good way. Like, if I get colleges officer, I will have that portfolio, but I will be a general exec member who has voting rights and all of that. So um, having a PR rep, is too contentious, I believe. Um, you shouldn't just have one person to advocate for that. You should just generally apply. See, I'm applying for college officer and I'll be on it, hopefully. Oh, cool, so that's interesting. So your view is that you just want to get more of your community running for, for the spots that exist. Oh, and is that you, you, your same view, different view? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely with you. Now. I just believe that, you know, everyone is capable of achieving whatever that they set their minds to. So if we just really encourage everyone to go for, you know, what they want to do, then nothing is stopping you. And I think it's more just participation that we are trying to boost. Cool. Um, I'll go to the recreation candidate. Um, there was a specific question I was asked to ask of you, not you personally, but of the recreation candidates. Um, is that there are sometimes negative media coverage of Otago students, but there are a lot of uh, positive things that clubs do. Do you have any specific plan to uh, promote the good work that students do as part of clubs? Uh, well, I guess this is a little bit of conflict of interest, but last year during Real Life Life, uh, we contacted all of media possible, and none of them were interested in even promoting it or doing a story on it. So obviously, as the recreation officer, I would definitely be keen on getting everyone who does volunteer work and anything good for our society in Dunedin. Like, and I believe that happens because sometimes it's the same day as Hyde Street. So oh, it's not because we talked about the information. Not, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. Oh, but so how, how do you get those events though to stand out instead of Hyde Street Talk? Well, um, the new story, is it? they um, covered the volunteer, the Dunedin Shelter Field, um, and they're really keen on getting involved and looking at what Dunedin do, like good things that Dunedin do other than Hyde Street, which make us look awful when we're not. I forgot what the original question I asked at the start was. What was it? Uh, <coughs> yeah, con contention. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so how would you resolve disagreement? Which uh, I think it's really important to take the personal side out of it. <clears throat> and at the end of the day, like, you're there to do a job. I think it's really important that you don't let personal issues get in the way of actually making things better for OUSA. 
So it's about sitting back, sort of looking at all the things that have been presented in front of you and saying, yep, this is the best option I feel like. Take my personal side of out of it. Should there be lots of public votes? And yeah, I, I, when, we like, when the voice goes, say we need to listen to them, I think that's really important. It's, it shouldn't be closed doors, it should be open and engaged. Um, how, how do you gauge that student opinion? I mean, because we've had some polls, which, as you were just saying, that's a great example of ways which we can ask for OSA. We can also, just going down there and actually being, like, talking to them in purpose and around, in the link and stuff like that. It's a good way. Yeah. yeah, resolving resolving disagreement, what would you do? Um, I think the, as the international officer, um, I think the role is quite separate from um, everyone else because we have a separate line of budget, I think. Um, also, um, I'm a firm believer that there's always going to be compromise, but um, there's always going to be a middle ground, and I feel like we can always talk it out. And if there isn't, then have a forum and then do a discussion about it and then have a re-election. You, you would still vote though on, on issues as an international rep and you are running on the ticket with luck. And so will you guys be voting as a block on exec? Um, I don't understand the question. So, so you, you're currently on a ticket with other candidates. When you guys are on the executive, will you be all voting together? Um, no. Probably the better answer. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> so, um, so you, do you think there should be lots of public votes at exec meetings? Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cool, cool. Thank you. Um, I do believe, uh, with some experience and stuff like this, public votes are always a good idea on contentious issues, but at some time, say, it can also, depending on how contentious it is, it could be damaging to the association if there was a public vote. So some votes should be behind closed doors. Okay, cool. Um, and, you know, it's all very well for candidates to say, oh, they can listen to students, but quite often students just aren't that interested, but they'll still have a view. So what do you think is the best way to gauge what the majority of the student body think on any given matter? I think it is actually just best to actually just go to where students are, really. Um, not as a member of the executive, try not as a, to act as a member of the executive, but just to go into the bars, to the student events, just have conversations with people. Um, not just, you don't go out there to ask specific questions, you just get into a conversation with a student and their views become apparent. Okay, cool, thank you. And finally, Lucy. Oh, so how, how do you think disagreement on the executive should be resolved? Okay, so um, I'm a postgraduate student, so every day of my life I have to read, listen, be critical, be open-minded. Every Friday, my supervisor is highly critical of me. Um, <laughs> I'm no stranger to these kinds of opinions, and I'm also very open-minded to these kinds of opinions. So, if there was a conflict on OUSA, there's always the time to know that somebody may perhaps know a little bit more than you. There's always the time to leave your ego at the door. So, yeah, dealing with those kinds of conflicts, Cool, thank you. Um, so it's two o'clock and we do want time for questions. So what I will do is, this is not, this is only because of time constraints, is give the people who are in a contested position one minute to sum up their time. Um, if you're not in a contested position, I don't really think you need one minute. It's probably not going to make a difference unless critics are going to determine what they say about you based on that one minute. Joel, you, you, no, okay. Um, Okay, so those in contested positions, so you guys, and then you two, uh, you've got one minute to make a closing statement on why people should vote for you. I think you should vote for me because I'm ready. I'm ready to get my hands dirty, I'm ready to get in there, I'm ready to go to meetings on meetings on meetings, I'm ready to talk to people, I'm ready to make change. Vote Lucy for postgraduate. I think you should vote for me because I have some experience with postgraduate um, already. Ellen, um, both from the Graduate Research School Committee and through the Otago University Postgraduate Society. I've already begun to work to improve postgrad life here at university. And I hope you, all postgrads, would be willing to work with me to create a better Otago University world. Thank you. Oh, and now to the colleges. 
Um, I'd love to obviously to be a colleges officer. I think I'm the voice that colleges need. I can be out there, I can be talking to people, I can be sort of like really pushing the issues that need to be pushed quite loudly and importantly for OU to say. Uh, I think I have some great policies that I can bring to it as well as a great attitude, commitment and enthusiasm towards the role. Thanks. You should vote Sina for colleges officer because I bring experience. I'm in my third year. I know what it's like to live in a hall, but I also know what it's like to live in a cold, damp flat. Um, I have had leadership experience and I have really good policies. I want to be involved with RA training. I want to um, establish good um, flooding advice sort of forums in which um, our residents can be prepared for their second year um, and their first year of flooding. Um, so yeah, both Centre for Colleges, thank you. Oh, awesome guys, I think we should have a round of applause for all the candidates. Okay, so we'll have questions from the floor. Um, the procedure is you do, even if you're not affiliated with a ticket, you should disclose who you would be supporting. If you're supporting anyone and say your full name, um, we, I, because there's lots of candidates, I'll have to be quite strict today on sort of keeping answers to time and just moving on from topics which have already been adequately covered, so do try and ask novel questions. Um, yeah, so are there any questions in the audience? Of critic? Go critic and then later. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joe, I work for Critic. Um, in the post-voluntary um, student membership um, era, so like since the legislation was passed to have voluntary student membership, um, money doesn't necessarily flow very freely in the USA. And have you heard of any policies that, um, in the last two days or from the candidates on stage with you that you um, don't necessarily agree with on the basis of too much money being spent on them? Yeah, so everyone, just 10 second answer. Um, yeah, I think the food truck, food truck would cost a lot. Um, Pose the food truck? Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm with Sina on that one. I'm Sam. Uh, I'm obviously for the food truck. You probably hear quite a lot of the last few days, but uh, in terms of the overall budget, I mean, I think it's a great capital investment. It's something that will be benefiting students, not just next year, but for years to come. I think it's a great thing. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, I'm in support for the food truck as well, because not only that, it provides um, health and safety. It provides safety, especially for international students, which most problems arise on the street, as opposed to um, in campus. And there's going to be a campus watch there as well, so it's a great oversight for international students. Oh, thank you. I am in support of the food truck. Uh, I do have some idea of what kind of money OUSA actually has, and I do not think it's actually that big of a cut in the long term as it is a capital investment. I'm anti food truck, um, so I'm just not into the idea. I think they keep pitching it as a business model. But I also don't think they're taking into consideration the staff members at OUSA that will have to be helping out with this food truck. I think it's a big question to ask of those people. We already have a lot on this side. Okay, cool, thanks guys. Just to point out, um, pe people like Sarah and Jerome at OUSA uh, helpfully recorded yesterday's debate where there was an extensive discussion about the food truck. Um, so if you want to know more about that, I'd suggest watching that. Um, we're not going to discuss that anymore. It's going live at two. Oh, be cool. Um, so, Baden. Oh, uh, hello, I'm Baden and I'm the um, current Colleges Officer. So this question is just directed at um, Sina and James. Um, so what experience do each of you guys have in terms of making sure you're an effective voice for students? Considering that um, the role you'll be dealing with heads of colleges who have been in the position for about 30 years, some of them. Um, so how can you make sure that you're, a, you're going to be a voice that can be taken seriously and what previous experience do you have? Thank you. Um, I think I've got a lot of experience speaking with lots of other people, especially older people, more experienced people. Uh, through things like Rotary, I'm the Vice President of Rotary, and through that we have lots of association with Rotary, which is a large, massive sort of company with generally more experienced older people. And through that I've developed lots of skills and abilities which I can actually work very efficiently with people of that age break and that experience. 
and I feel like with those skills I can do a fantastic job of representing colleges and working with wardens. Yeah, so I'm the Vice President on the Otago Solomon Students Association and I do have a lot of experience as well speaking with older people. I was the student rep on the Board of Trustees a few years back, um, but I also know what it's like to speak with people of that age bracket and um, yeah, I think relationships are really important because um, I will be dealing, oh, whoever wins will be dealing with college heads a lot and um, presidents and RAs and whatnot. So I think that I'll be capable, I will be a capable um, person in building relationships as well. Oh, thanks guys. Um, Paul has a question here. Yeah, I'm a, I have a, a vested interest in the student association. Uh, just wanted to, when I hear people saying that I want to go down the middle road and we can always find an answer and it's all comfortable, first question and part of the question is in the same thing. OUSA is actually the leadership, so sometimes that means stepping out beyond that comfortable place where, where you're going to be looked at. When I hear you saying that you can find it in your hearts to accept increased student fees, and you want them to go to those of us who are on salaries. And I'm sure you know many of us receive more than $500 seven days a week as academic staff and other staff. And the frowns on your face suggest to me that maybe you don't. Okay. How do you feel about the money, your increased fees, going to those who are on academic staff who might actually want to do it because Otago has such a great name? And at the same time, the cleaners who look after the place to make sure you can come here every day aren't going to get an increase? Or would you advocate that if the money, this is the question, if the money is going to be increased, are you going to give it to academic staff and others receiving more than $500 a day, or to the cleaning and auxiliary staff who are on minimum wages? I think you raised an important issue, and I would oppose giving academics um, such as yourself a pay rise. I think that's really important. Oh, sorry, no. Are you not an academic? Sorry. Um, um, yeah, I support very much so a pay increase for cleaners and people on minimum wage. It's not, we're already in a better position as, as, um, than most of those people in that position, so I think us as students should, um, would be, us as students should support a pay rise um, for those people, thanks. Uh, yeah, no, I, I believe that they should definitely that 2% increase should definitely go to people that, you know, basically keep this place running, keep it clean for all of our students. We do benefit when we come here and the tables are clean for us to eat on, the, you know, the toilets are clean. Um, I just honestly believe that we sometimes take them for granted and imagine if they weren't there, so, yeah. Uh, well, I said before that it, I like my lecturers and I think some of them deserve a better rise, but I didn't really think of it in that context, so I definitely think the cleaners and stuff des would deserve to be above minimum wage to keep us, keep us in. Yeah. A, again, Sorry, a just to cut you off, there's a yeah. mayoral, mayoral candidate who is advocating for the living wage, so maybe you could uh, indicate whether you, you support that. It's a, a wage rate that is about 5 to $10 above the minimum wage. $19, 18 hour. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, I've, I'm not sure we'll get into the mayoral candidates sort of side of things. I probably don't know enough to commit myself to something like that. But as far as increasing the minimum wage for workers, like the cleaners and stuff like that, I think it's fantastic. I mean, in the day they are, like, they're the ones cleaning the tables, especially in colleges. They're the one coming in every Thursday to wake you up at 10 o'clock to clean your floor and vacuum you, and then you just have a nice chat with them. And I, I think it's really important towards colleges and OSA life. So, yeah, I'll be all for that. Yep, same reasoning, I think. I'll probably be in support of that increase um, in wages um, for cleaners, and um, yeah, it'll be great. You raised a valid point about how many of the academic staff are happy to be at the university based solely on its, um, on its reputation. But many of the same academic staff also go above and beyond what is expected of their jobs, and so they are definitely deserving of pay increases but I also agree that there should not be a pay increase just one side at a time. The pay increase should be representative of all of Otago staff. Yeah, I agree that. I think every single member of this Otago community should 
be equal to this, this pay rise to this pay rise. I think my top tip for life is value every single person that comes into your life. Even if it's the woman that cleans your office, she's amazing. Value her. Now, Sutherland, question. Very quick, yes or no? Do you think that staff here deserve to be earning $500 a day, seven days a week or more? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's the Vice Chancellor's salary, isn't it? No, no, no. Okay. No, the Vice Chancellor is a lot more than that. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. 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 I, I, I think they may be confused about the context, but... Um, right, Lark, who is a presidential candidate, has a question. Yeah, full disclosure, I am running to be president. Um, my question is for the four people that proposed the food truck. Just a simple yes or no. Do you have any indication of how big the capital budget is for OUSA and these kinds of investments? Is that the capital expenditure of three hundred and twenty something thousand dollars? No, the the over the budget they have for investment. Investment. No, I'm not actually sure about that one. No. No. No, but I know a bad idea when I hear one. Um, uh, Lark, what is your understanding of what the capital budget is? My understanding of the capital budget is that what would be a maximum figure of $70,000 for an asset for OUSA to be out there, to be in the community, is a drop in the ocean. Uh, Jared and then Orgo, Frankie and then Jared. Yeah, Kia Koto, my name is Frankie Mezen and I cannot vote. But seeing as the food truck has been brought up again, there seems to be a lot of resistance against it. So why would you keep pushing for the candidates that are like, for the food truck? Why do you keep pushing for something that apparently doesn't seem to fit with a lot of people that will be voting? And if you are going to go into the position and the students are against it, collectively, or majority I should say, why do you continue to still advocate for that? Um, for, if I was to vote for those candidates, it would not be based on whether I am for or against the food truck. I would, well, I think that's a good idea. It is not part of my reasoning for who I'm voting for. Um, I think Sorry, that wasn't actually my question. So I'm saying if, if it's going to get to the end of your, in an executive meeting or you're asking the students, and clearly there's already an indication that people are against the food, food truck. Why do you keep saying that you think it would be good? So tell me why you think it's good. I see um, the reason, I agree with the reasoning that Lark and her party have for it, that there is a, it would improve student life for those that it would be used for. Um, coming from the international standpoint, I think it's great um, sort of um, safeguard for international students on the street. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't in fact think the students are against it at all. We've been talking to lots of people, and they're all for it. They love it. I think it's it's a very easy thing for other candidates to attack. I think it's something very simple they can say, "Oh, it's bad." But from the, all the students we've been talking to, a hundred of them, they're all for it, and I think they love the idea. Uh, the positives, I think we're going through the positives of the food truck probably enough times. There's election twins. Well, is anyone else in favour who hasn't spoken? I look forward to a big article in Cricket, critics solely on the food truck. <laughs> uh, Jared. Kia ora, I'm Jared. Uh, I'm supporting Hugh Baird for President. Um, I'd just like to ask all candidates if they could think of maybe one or two uh, reasons uh, or examples of how $70,000 could be better spent. Okay, so let's put $70,000 into the mental health services that our campus provides. Let's also put $70,000 into those food banks that OUSA supply. Let's get more of those and let's get them out to more students. Um, the point that I see a lot of people mistaking is that the
this seventy thousand dollars is seventy thousand dollars that could be spent on anything. It is seventy thousand dollars in a capital investment budget, so it can only be spent on a capital investment. If there was another idea for a great capital investment that would help students, um, I can't actually think of one off the top of my head. Um, implementing a food truck, so that's one. Um, <laughs> Um, because I think that's a good idea. Again, it's for me, what's important is making sure that international students are safe, and that's a really good method and avenue for me to do that. So, um, yeah. I think there's one other thing we need to realise, that just because $70,000 is maybe going towards a food truck, that doesn't mean that more money can't be put into other things like mental health and stuff like that. It's not like we're saying, oh, we're not funding anything else, we're just funding a food truck. It's one of the things we're funding. It's one of the things we're pushing towards. And so mental health can also have $70,000, stuff like that. I think it's important just to sort of think that like, yep, it's only going towards a food truck. It's not. It's one of the many ideas we're putting towards. I understand that, but in my personal opinion, I definitely think it'd be better to go towards mental health, and I agree with Lucy that it should go towards the food as well. Um, I agree with with you two both on those points. Um, I understand it is a capital capital investment, so why don't you do something like a bus or something that's going to get people home safe? Um, you can not talking about capital investment, but just with merely $70,000, you can improve mental health, get better exam packs, um, put it towards lowering the cost of food for us poor students who are struggling. There's not enough money for us um, weekly, so I believe that it could be spent better. Um, yeah, I agree with that. I think that it could also go into maybe fun. Um, more study spaces that are open for longer, I think that's a really important thing. Um, and yeah, and definitely mental health is just something that can affect everyone. And yeah, just more study spaces that are open for longer, I just think that's something that people, sometimes it slips from the back of their minds, but it's so important because when I used that open for 24 hours, I was like one of the first people getting a free coffee, so yeah. Oh, um, uh, we have reopened the topic again. Um, so I will give uh, Mark's herself an opportunity for one more response. I will just ask a question though for that. Um, the defence of it is that it's a capital investment, which means that there is a specific return. So OUSA has investments with uh, Foresight Bar in which there's a specific rate of return. So what I want to know is what do you think is an appropriate rate of return, i.e. how much money should the uh, food bus Generate. Um, as, as I understand it, for a capital investment, um, you want to be looking at about three-ish percent return. So, if you look at that across an entire year on a seventy thousand dollar investment, you're probably going to be able to make three percent back. It's not a particularly large amount. I think what people are really forgetting is that this is an asset. This is something that you will have that you will keep. It is. It is like James said. It is not a different expend. It's a different expenditure bu budget to what other things are going into. It's also the fact that you can buy that. It's not mutually exclusive to anything else anyone else wants to do. It's an idea. It's innovative. It's new. It's different. And from what I've heard, no one else has got anything better that they can offer. Cool. Uh, uh, are there any other questions? Hi, um, my name is Mary D and I am supporting the two on the end there, my lovely sisters, but this question is for Lucy. Is that your name, sorry? Yeah. Yep. Hi. Um, I just wanted to, um, I caught that you mentioned that you, ben you do not agree with putting economic benefits over human rights. Um, how will you advocate um, rights of postgraduate? So, over economic Sorry. So the way that I would do that is I really just want to celebrate our postgraduate students. I want to get them up on the stage and I want them to share with you their narratives, their stories, their research. And I think once people start realising that we have these amazing minds living and breathing around our campus, I think then they're going to start realising that it's probably time that we start valuing these people's minds over their pockets. 
for all candidates or just the first grade? I, I do agree on the same policy with that in that same sense with Lucy. I didn't actually ask this question, I forgot, but um, I will get a quick run around on the humanities cut. So um, some, some tickets are suggesting that rich departments like science uh, should subsidise the humanities so they can be delivered at the same level. Um, other tickets are more of the view that it's just a result of fewer people uh, enrolling in humanities. Um, where do the candidates sit on this issue? If it's feasible for these health sciences and STEM subjects to be able to subsidise the humanities, and I think it's something that we can look into, I think all of these subjects, if you're a STEM student, if you're a health science student, you're always going to need the humanities. It very honestly and literally is the heart of this university. I agree with that. I think the humanities is the core of any university. And I was very unhappy to hear about the cuts, and at the same time that we're cutting humanities, Auckland University has made the opposite decision to market for more humanities students. So I think that um, in the short term, subsidisation should, in times of need, other departments should subsidise humanities and the university should make more effort into increasing student numbers rather than making cuts. Um, I think it's unfortunate that, that that is happening and I feel like um, there needs to be some other way to sort of compensate these cuts. Um, maybe like specialised papers um, for the humanities um, department and um, yeah, don't know too much about it, but yeah. Yeah, I'll be all for other departments supporting humanities. I think it's a matter of being a community and working together. Instead of saying, yep, humanities needs our help at the moment, together we're going to help them, we're going to make sure they can stay afloat, because they are so important, as Lucy said before, they're so important. And so it's a matter of, yep, you know, working together as a community and helping humanities. I'm the same, but I also do agree with Adam and we should advertise for more humanities. People come to Otago University since our roles dropped anyway, so I think we should, um, yeah, promote people to come to Otago. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. Um, Otago is well known for our sciences, but we should push push for um, humanities, push our humanities um, studies because I think it's important. If sciences are making more money, then we should be all for cross subsidisation because we want Otago to thrive as a whole. We're not just merely for sciences, we should be for humanities as well. Yeah, I, I totally agree with what everyone said. I think I'd just be repeating what they said if I said it was all I wanted to say. Yeah. This is a really quick comment from an old man. He's also a life member now, and this year's president is about to become one. And I think we will all agree that the last two or three years have been difficult for our USA and adjusting to the relationships. But what we're seeing is real caliber coming forward, and you guys have an opportunity to make this the biggest election ever for a number of years, and we would encourage you to do what you're doing, but do more of it. You're exciting young people, and our USA looks like a good hand. God bless. Thank you. All nice words. <laughs> Any other questions? No? Awesome. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Uh, good luck to the candidates for the elections.